Good morning, everyone. Um, so first off, I just want to share that for this assembly, um, basically, we learned that due to illness, the assembly speaker we originally had planned for today had canceled. And we were offered the opportunity to use the time and the space to share our heritage. And so I'm saying that because when I asked for volunteers, I just want to make sure to thank before we even start the folks who are reading poems, who are sharing stories um, and sharing their experiences because this assembly wouldn't happen without them. So um, we will start off this morning with our opening. So thanks for your attention. Hi everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Suman and I'm currently a junior. So we're here today to acknowledge and honor the AAPI Heritage Month, which spans the month of May and celebrates the diversity of histories and cultures encompassed within the acronym AAPI, um, or Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. So the term AAPI is very complex. Um, Asian American, as defined by the Census Bureau, uh, lumps together groups from the Far East, Southeast Asia, and the Indian subcontinent. Um, while the term Pacific Islander is used for peoples of Hawaii, Guam, Samoa, or the Pacific Islands. And so while we are celebrating the collective nature um, of the AAPI community, we must also recognize the individual ethnic groups that, uh, which have a rich community, um, histories, languages, and privilege uh, issues. So now I want to take a moment to talk about the history of AAPI Heritage Month and how it came to be. So AAPI Heritage Month was originally in 1977, proposed only for the first week of May as Pacific Asian American Heritage Week. Um, however, after various resolutions, Congress passed legislation in 1992 that annually designated May as the month to celebrate and learn about the historical contributions of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in the United States. And so the lawmakers chose May because of its historical significance. Um, namely, they sought to commemorate the immigration of the first Japanese people on May 7, 1843, as well as Golden Spike Day on May 10, 1869, when the first transcontinental railroad was completed. Um, in large part due to the help of Chinese laborers. It is important to recognize the contributions that Asian Americans have made in the United States, and AAPI Heritage Month seeks to bring these contributions to light, um, as well as further celebrate the achievements and rich history of these Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. The AAPI, AAPI community has been through a lot these past few years, to say the least. Um, though anti-Asian racism has been a large part of our history, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the encouragement of anti-Asian rhetoric by key figures in American government have fueled the rise of anti-Asian hate crimes across the US. And I would like to acknowledge that March 16th uh, this year marked the one year anniversary of the shootings in Atlanta where a white man um, went to multiple, multiple spas and killed eight people, six of whom were women of Asian descent. This tragedy sparked protests around the country and more attention toward the racism that the Asian community has faced. And this year also marks the one year anniversary of the Stop Asian Hate Movement, designed to take action against anti-Asian discrimination and violence. Though we have seen so much action and have heard so many voices advocating for change, both from the AAPI community and from allies, there's still, so, uh, there's still so much work to be done. But with this pain and outrage, there is hope and beauty to be found within our community. This can particularly be found in literature, uh, whether it serves to fuel political movements, shed light on issues we face, or simply convey parts of ourselves and our backgrounds. Um, so today, some students, faculty, and staff have willingly volunteered to read poems by API writers, and by reading their work and recognizing our shared identity through poetry. We hope that you feel the emotion and the experiences that each writer puts into their work, especially here at a school that values connection and diversity, as well as works of art. Poetry serves as an evocative and elevating medium that allows us to recognize these amazing AAP writers and provides a valuable experience for everyone to learn and embrace the experiences of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Whether painful, light, deep, or humorous, our community has so many stories to share. And I hope that by listening to our wonderful peers and teachers as they present this selection of poems, 
We will be able to celebrate the accomplishments of these API writers as a whole community and take a step in celebrating API Heritage Month. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Ms. Valpana, and I will be uh, reading a poem. I don't actually know what it's called. The author is named Corvi Shah, and she is an Indian American um, poet. Um, focusing on issues of immigration. And I think that um, while not all uh, AIPI folks are immigrants, um, the immigrant experience is certainly part of our shared history. She has a crown, an antenna of sorts, blue green sea sliding into sands. The peahen actually is not so drab. You wander fences, Sentence to turn soil. The immigrant knows what it is to move, for movement is in our naming. Even when our own naming is not part of any movement, even as we are branded drab. You remind yourself of your lumina. Your eyes trace misplaced joy, a dark grace tuning, a dark grace nesting. Resilience bristles iridescent, new lands you dream. You cannot remember your first form of dreaming. An immigrant is always imagining belonging while holding tight to one's longing. Before feathers flare, a bent head unsettling landscape, discovering a way to strut, if not to fly. Thank you. Hi, my name is Naomi and I'm gonna be reading a poem by Jose Garcia Villa. Um, he was a poet in the Philippines and then immigrated here to go to Columbia University. And this is just one of his poems in his collection titled Divine Poems. When I was no bigger than a huge star in myself, I began to write my theology of rose and tiger till I burned with their pure and rage then was I wrathful and most gentle, most dark and yet most lit. In me and I there grew, springing, vision its gold and its wars. Then I knew the Lord was not my creator, not he the unbegotten, but I saw the creator was I. And I began to die and I began to grow. Thank you. Hello everybody, I miss Shu. I'm Alice. And we're reading Things We Care on the Sea by Wang Ping, a Chinese American poet. We carry tears in our eyes. Goodbye, father. Goodbye, mother. We carry soil in small bags. May home never fade in our hearts. We carry names, stories, memories of our villages, fields, boats. We carry scars from proxy wars of greed. We carry carnage of mining, droughts, floods, genocides. We carry deaths of families and neighbors, incinerated in mushroom clouds. We carry our islands sinking under the sea. We carry our hands, feet, bones, hearts, and best minds for a new life. We carry diplomas, medicine, engineer, nurse, education, math, poetry, even if they mean nothing to the other shore. We carry railroads, plantations, laundromats, bodegas, charcoal trucks, farms, factories, nursing homes, hospitals, schools, temples, built on our ancestors' backs. We carry old homes along the spine, new dreams in our chests. We carry yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We are orphans of the wars forced upon us. We are refugees of the sea, rising from industrial wastes. And we carry our mother tongues. I love, ping an, peace. Xi Wang, hope, 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 as we drift in our rubber boats from shore to shore to shore. I'm Ms. Mies, and I will be reading a poem by a Khmer poet, uh, Yu Sam O, oh, titled Dream, from his book of poetry, Sacred Vows a poem that deals with the survival of Khmer uh, people 
um, the su survivors who uh, made it through the Cambodian genocide, which lasted from 1975 to 1979. My parents and I are among the survivors. This poem celebrates life, the lives of those who remained standing um, alive to recount the dream. And I will be reading it in Khmer, and then we'll provide you with the translation. Knyom hail tak kat tang le tom. Kabat the light plat be down cho. Kabat pa put japon. Knyom re yo ma matai yo ma tok. Pantai kabat cha. ไดบะปะไหมาวปิโยกับขมายกบัดไดกันปะลังขมายขญมตะแลจาวมันโยเต้ขญมตะแลจาวมันโยเต้ขญมตะแลจาวมันโยเต้ขญมตะแลจาว
and no one would ridicule us. And behind the clouds, you would be mine. Hello, my name is Soren, and I'll be reading For a Daughter of the Leaves by Janice Murakutani. A woman weaves her daughter's wedding slippers that will carry her steps into a new life. The mother, mother weeps alone into her jeweled sewing box, slips red thread around its spinner. The same she used to stitch her daughter's first silk jacket embroidered with turtles that would bring luck, long life. She remembers all the steps taken by her daughter's unbound quick feet, dancing on the stones of the yard among yellow butterflies and white-breasted sparrows. As she grew, legs strong, body long, mind independent. Now she capture, captures all eyes with a hair combed smooth and her hips gently swaying like bamboo. The woman spins her thread from the spool of her heart, knotted to her daughter's departing wedding slippers. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Payson. Today I'll be reciting to you a poem written by Vijay Shashagar. Um, he was born in India, came to the United States in 1959, um, and has since then written many poems, essays, and reviews. Uh, all right, the poem today uh, is called The Disappearances. Um, yeah. The Disappearances by Vijay Shashagar. Where was it one, where was it one first heard of the truth? On a day like any other day, like yesterday or centuries before, in a town with the one remembered street shaded by the Buckeye and the Sycamore, the street long and true as a theorem, the day like yesterday or the day before, the street you walked down centuries before, the story the same as others flooding in from the cardinal points is turning to take a good look at you. Every creature, intelligent or not, has disappeared. The humans, phosphorescent, the duplicating pets, the guppies and spaniels, the Woolsworth turtle that cost 49 cents with the soiled price tag half peeled on its shell. But from the look of things, it only just happened. The wheels of the upside down tricycle are still spinning. The swings are empty, but swinging. And the shadow is still there. And there is the object that made it, riding the proximate atmosphere of long and illustrious above the dispeopled bedroom community, venting the memories of those it took their corrosive human element. This is what you have to walk through to escape, transparent but alive as cold dust. This is what you have to hack through, bamboo tough and thickly clustered. The myths are somewhere else, but here are the meanings. And you have to breathe them in until they burn your throat and peck at your brain with their intoxicated teeth. This is what this is you as seen by them from the corner of an eye. Is that the way you were always seen? This is you when the president died. The day is brilliant and cold. This is you poking a ground wasp nest. This is you at the doorway unobserved while your aunts and uncles keen over the body. This is your first river, your first planetarium, your first popsicle. The cold and brilliant day in six color prints, but the people on the screen are black and white. Your friend's mother is saying, hush children, do you understand history is being made? You do. And you still do, made and made again. This is you as seen by them, and them as seen by you, and you as seen by you, in five dimensions, in seven, and three again, then two, then reduced to a dimensionless point in a universe where the only constant is the speed of light. This is you at the speed of light. Thank you.